You were an accident. <laughs> we never want to hear that. This is Aromi here and welcome back to Red Embrace Hollywood and it's no longer a demo. Actually, you guys did tell me this game came out. Don't worry, I did kickstart them so I actually knew when it was going to drop but I didn't have time to actually play the game until now. They also actually reached out to me and gave me a um, key, I guess, key key code thing to actually play the game little did they actually know that i, I kind of backed them up and i backed the tier where i could get the game for a cheaper price so i gave the beautiful free pass to Sudis. so i hope you're enjoying it i actually kind of got a spoiler of this game on twitter from uh, not really I didn't really want to see it, but <laughs> it's, I guess it's not really a spoiler, but they're just basically saying that this game isn't really romantic based. It's more of just a story. So there's not strong points of romance, which kind of bums me out because that was really what I was hoping for. I'm only only I, I'm only only I'm only going to play one route because I'm only really interested in Heath. What's his name? So I'm only going to play his route. So if you guys wanted to get the game yourself to play all the other routes, you guys can definitely do that. Just kidding. You guys can actually tell me if you want me to play the other routes, which is Marcus and Randall. I also mentioned this later on in the episode or probably the second episode that I'm going to decide whether uh, I play the other two routes, depending if you guys want to watch it. So yeah, just definitely tell me if you guys want me to play the other two guys routes. But let's actually start the game. Um, I don't think there's that much of a difference from the last time I played it. Except like extra hair color and all that. Nose piercing. I always honestly wanted a nose piercing at one point. But I'm thankful I didn't because it, I think it was just a phase. <laughs> it's just a phase, mom. What is our name? It is Michiko. She, her. Thank you. Skip intro. Yes. What house would you like to be? Um, I think last time I ended up being in Iskari twice. Uh, actually, twice as in like I did play the updated demo, but I never published it because there, there wasn't that huge of an update in dialogue. But I believe I was Iskari from what I remember. For those of you that haven't watched the demo, you get to do a little quiz and it'll put you in a house. But I already remember what house I belonged in. The next thing I knew, I was in the sidewalk outside the club. What the hell was I doing here? Had I blacked out? Was this a dream? I couldn't remember walking outside, even though I hadn't drunk, uh, I hadn't drunk anything strong. But I did remember that strange man. What he said to me. The bite. The bite? Did that mean no? What a stupid thing to the stupid thing to think. Oh, so I just completely skipped everything that was in the demo where I was at a club and I got bit and all that stuff. <laughs> all right then. I mean, we already did play the demo, so it's it's whatever. That must have just been a weird hallucination brought on by the flashing lights and pounding music. It served me right for being such a sleazy. Uh, for uh, sorry, it served me right for going to such a sleazy club. Honestly. Alright, because I did not want to play that demo like three times, the like, intro three times. Technically, you guys only see me do it once. I stumbled through the streets, finding the urge to stop and vomit. I could feel my skin growing cold, my mouth was dry, and I didn't need to breathe. Yet, it almost felt like I was floating too, effortlessly gliding forward. At the same time, a surge of painful, muddled emotions rushed through me, and if I could have cried, I think I would have. No. No, none of this was possible. There had to be some sort, some other explanation. Vampires didn't exist. But if they didn't exist, then what was I becoming? A vampire. I'm a vampire. <laughs> By the time I ran out of the corner to an alleyway, I was ready to slump down and curl up until I figured out what the hell was going on. But as soon as the alley came into view... Hello. I saw someone standing there watching me. Not just watching. It seemed more like he was waiting for me. Hmm. He took a deep breath, slowly shaking his head. You smell fresh. 
Thanks, I guess. If I strain my ears, I can always hear water dripping dripping back into the bapti baptismal font. The man's deep voice was accented with an aristocratic southern drawl, each word slow and empathetic. His manner of speech reminded me of a preacher, mel melodic and a little theatrical, but it was instantly a sense that something about him was different, wrong somehow. Who the hell are you? Is this a dream? Are you like me? Um, in this mindset, my girl's fucked up. I think she would say, who the hell are you? Uh, should I bother even saving? Cause yeah, it shows my last saves, which is insane. To be honest. Um, <laughs> holy shit in May. My God. Right, we're gonna save over it. Um, I think I would say, who the hell are you? I honestly don't care what I, uh, what ending we get. As long as we don't die. I say that, I say I don't care, but I kind of sort of care. Who the hell are you? Oh, we're not in hell yet, sister. Why, this is prerogatory. At least get the zip code, right? A knowing smile stretched over his lips and he adjusted his sunglasses smugly. I kind of, I said I didn't want to go for all the routes, but I might because he's quite interesting. Now as for introductions, there's only three guys. You know what, I'll just let you guys pick. Tell me if you want me to try all the routes or just stick with Heath, I believe is the guy I want to go for. But yeah, you guys do it for me. You guys answer for me, not do it for me. I'm gonna be the one <laughs> playing the game, obviously. Now it's for introductions. I am the Grandmaster who plays blindfolded. That cut on your hand, you don't remember getting. That scratched out face on the yearbook photo, which I've never honestly done, I think. I think I wanted to do it on one person, or maybe I did, and then I feel guilty. I don't remember. They call me Marcus, and I am happy to, to, happy to join you for the best and worst night of your existence. After tipping an imaginary hat to me, he flashed a wide grin, and I glimpsed two small white things shining in the light. No need to mention your own name, Michiko, so don't worry. I know exactly who you are. And now you're one of us, a night stalker, a blood sucker, an overblown myth hiding a horrible monster. Wow, such beautiful writing. That was honestly cute, the whole, like, rhyming. You're a vampire sister, welcome to the Valley of Death. So I've really been turned into a vampire. This can't be real. Vampires aren't real. Stop bullshitting me and tell me the truth. Honestly, at this point, I would be like, wow, so I'm really a vampire? Well, not quite. Right now, I'd say you're more resemble a walking corpse. It's not until you sink your fangs into a live, into a live body, feel the heat flowing into your cold guts, that you start to sit, shift into something more. Okay. My brain didn't feel like it could process what Marcus was saying. <laughs> Everything made sense, but at the same time, it all just seemed too insane to be real. Okay, is my camera correctly? Okay, it's on this side. The only thing I don't like about this game, but then it's just me as a creator, is like the dialogue boxes was moved from left to right, so I would have to constantly. It's just, it's just a, it's just me. Play, let's play her point of view. As if he could sense my confusion, Marcus let out a patient sigh. Considering you look bemused, let me try to put the facts of the situation in simpler terms. You merely turn into a different kind of parasite sister. Oops, I kind of, um, what, what, a parasite sister? An honest one. Oh, really? Money, sex, favors, you won't have to suck those out of human folk anymore. They will simply fall into your lap. Well, I'm fine with the, the money, but... <laughs> Money, free money, why not? Just blood. Just blood is all you need now. Doesn't that make you feel relieved? But how is all that gonna fall into my lap, to be honest, if I don't work for it? Marcus suddenly paused, taking a deep, long sniff of the air. A few moments later, he leaned towards me, this time sniffing close to my neck. What are you? Iscari, I see. I see, I had a feeling. Shine too brightly, sister. Far too brightly for a dead thing. Even a fine mask won't hide the rot inside. But maybe there's another reason you were chosen for that house, too. He winked at me, grinning like we shared some priceless inside joke. Except I didn't get the punchline. Um, what do you mean, Ascari? Indeed, you'll learn plenty about them soon enough. About yourself, rather. For now, you should at least know this. You were bitten by an Ascari vampire, which means your blood has taken on those, those qualities. Unsay equalities. And you're part of that house. 
You have my sincerest apologies. His lips curl into in, into a uh, curled in a small small into a, <laughs> in a slow insidious smirk that suggested his apologies were anything but sincere. Was anything he said to me sincere though? Did he actually know what was happening to me, or was he just some crazy druggie on the street? He does not look like a druggie. He looks too high class for that. With my mind reeling like this, I couldn't decide which situation was more plausible. This is not an exit. Okay. <laughs> Alright, I do believe that's enough. Before you get into any trouble, there's someone you need to meet. Come now, back to the pen like a good little lamb. This is really suspicious. I'm not going anywhere with you. Alright, this is really suspicious. Don't worry, sister. Time hasn't come yet. Before I had a chance to offer a reply, Marcus grabbed my shoulders, pulling me forcefully toward the street. Um, where are you taking me? Try to struggle or stay quiet. I would honestly say, where are you taking me? My cry was met with only silence, which was just which just worried me more. When I reached the street a few moments later, I noticed a black sedan parked in front of us. It hadn't been there when I walked by earlier. Don't worry, my dear. We wouldn't dream of making you ride in anything but luxury. His voice drawled in my ear, ringing with amusement as he opened the back seat door. We? Who is we? <laughs> oh, you'll see soon enough. Without further ceremony, Marcus shoved me inside the sedan, squeezing in behind me. The second he closed the door, the shadowy driver started up the car. We sped off down the road at an alarmingly fast pace. Well, I'm really confused though. How did he know that I was going to walk down that alley? I was too disoriented to try to figure out our, our to figure out our destination from the landmarks passing by, but that didn't keep a sickening sense of anticipation from building in my gut. If there are any questions burning on burning in your mind, now might be the time to ask. Marcus murmured f murmured to me from the other seat. I thought he was like beside me. What? Where are you at? His eyes glowing faintly behind their dark lenses. I can't pr promise you much, let alone the answers. But if for for figure. You deserve some semblance of a welcome. Let it never be said that I am not a gentleman. Um, were you waiting for me back there? Why was I turned into a vampire? Is every vampire completely nuts or is it just you? The selection screen's a bit different, I believe. Um, were you waiting for me back there? I was indeed. Consider me the bouncer to the eternal party in hell. Um, why was I turned into a vampire? Is every vampire completely nuts or is it just you? Marcus doesn't seem that bad though. Sanity, I think you find, is a very subjective thing. That aside, no, every vampire is quite different. My kind is only one house out of three. Um, why was I turned into a vampire? You have to ask my employer that, I'm afraid. I was probably told the details, but everything in my head sometimes blurred together into one big screaming mass. Alright, that's enough for now. As you say, sister. We rode for a short while longer, and in silence that followed, my mind felt blank. I was slowly coming to terms with what happened, even though the rational part of me insisted I was stuck in a dream. Wherever Marcus was taking me, I could only hope that I'd learned the truth behind everything, including that mysterious man at the club. Ugh, that hurts. It wasn't long before I arrived at a huge towering building marked with a giant sign that read Hollywood Heights Hotel. I passed by this intimidating place before, noticing the unusually high security outside. Everyone who passed through its doors had a certain strange presence about them, even stranger than most of Hollywood's eccentrics. Marcus pulled me out of the car and into the hotel's luxurious lobby, his boots clacking on the polished marble floors. We came to a stop in front of a private room, but instead of knocking, Marcus simply barged right in. Oh, such a gentleman you are. <laughs> Good evening. Uh, shit, I forgot how to pronounce her name, but I think it's Sao Rise. Think so? I brought my chica, our little Ascari mo no, sorry, not motivate. No, 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 what? <laughs> Please give her your warmest welcome. Hello. Ah, welcome back, Marcus. An elegant woman stood up from her chair to greet us, her eyes looking from Marcus to me. I've been expecting... It. I... It's not me. Marcus, there's been a mistake. This individual is not supposed to be bitten. She spoke in the very slow, dangerous fashion of someone barely controlling their rage. At least that rage seemed to be directed at Marcus, not me. Is that so? 
Marcus shrugged, looking about as bothered as if he'd forgotten to get milk from the grocery store. But her sister here was the only pretty young dead thing to walk out of the uh, abattoir. Your lucky candidate must have missed their appointment. Missed their... The woman steepled her fingers to her upper lip, and from the murderous way she stared at the ground, it was a wonder she didn't burn a hole through it. Just one headache after another. If only I could hire someone competent for a change. Oh. Hi. <laughs> Finally, with a deep sigh, she turned her focus back to me. I had the distinct feeling her calculating eyes were scrutinizing me, doing some kind of rapid cost-benefiting benefit analysis. Well, let me start by saying my name, Sarai Slock. S-A-O-R-I-S-E. Oh, Cherise, sorry. Ooh, I was always wrong. Hold on, let me write down your name so I know how to pronounce it. Where's my notepad? Oh, it's in front of me. Hold on, Cherise. Keep pronouncing your name wrong, so I'm gonna write it down. All right, gotcha. Got you. Wrote it down on my notepad. And I apologize for all this happening to you. Thank you again, developers, for putting that in there because i cannot read names worth anything as you might have guessed another mortal was supposed to receive the bite tonight not you it seems there was a misunderstanding you know i'm still not convinced this is real <laughs> then there's no way to turn me back what the hell you just ruined my life um to be honest i would be angry there's no need for rudeness as i believe i just said there was a misunderstanding yeah, it could be misunderstanding all you want, but it happened and I can't revert it. It seems my agent was sabotaged, presumably by your mysterious sire, who is no doubt an enemy of mine. Regardless, I'm rather short on time here, so I won't mince words. You can lament, lament over your loss of humanity for the next century, or you can accept the hand you've been dealt and move on. Cherise breezed for long without trying to hide her impatience or annoyance, like I was inconveniencing her somehow. You know what? I already got the bitchy attitude, so I just threw that at her, so it was fine if she throws it back at me. It almost left me speechless. She was going to chalk this up to a misunderstanding. You were an accident. <laughs> We never want to hear that, but I'm offering a purpose. As cruel as it may sound, this turn of events needn't be a tragic one for you. It is a chance for all you could ever want, wanted in life, perhaps even more, if you possess the will to survive. Therefore, my proposal is a straightforward one. Will you join the Los Angeles Coven of Vampires? My Coven. I don't have much of a choice, do I? Not particularly, no. Can you hide your fangs, please? I didn't ask for that. I'm pleased you realized this, at the very least, so we can proceed past formalities. The briefest of smiles flashed over her lips like a subliminal message flickering on a TV screen. Very well, let me establish the main three rules of our coven. One, when you feed, do not kill. It is unnecessary, since mortals always lose their memory of events leading up to the fight. Two, never reveal your true nature to a mortal. By doing so, you endanger not only yourself, but our entire kind. As a result, you'll be disposed of. And finally, do not turn any mortal into a vampire without my permission. My explicit permission. It's necessary to keep our population to a minimum, as otherwise the air could quickly become overcrowded. Do you understand all of this? crystal clear i do yeah yeah can you get to the point i do good see to it that you don't forget these rules all right i won't it means pretty hard not to forget but the quiet sniffs sheree's motion towards a chair beside marcus who had languidly stretched out into his seat while we were talking Hi, Marcus. As I settled down in the offered chair, Marcus flashed me a sidelong smirk. It seemed he found all of this particularly amusing. I mean, yeah, technically, because you weren't supposed to be the one that was bitten, but you ended up being one anyway. <sighs> Cherie snapped her fingers to get my attention. My state of shock wasn't high on her list of priorities, apparently. Now, Michiko, you have arrived during a most difficult time. It just so happens that we're in the middle of a war. A messy political war waged in the dark, entirely unbeknownst to mortals. Great. <laughs> she began her first business agenda. Cherise elegantly lowered herself on the couch opposite to me. The three houses, the ones all vampires belong to, Sky, Mavar, and Golgotha, are fighting for the rule of Los Angeles. To put it very crudely, Sky tend to be diplomatic, Mavar are more aggressive, and Golgotha are everything else. Ah, uh, if only it were that simple. Yes, well, no doubt she'll learn of the nuisances soon enough. Well, I'm only interested in Heath, so... 
Crossing her legs, Cherise let out a faint sigh, one hand flitting to push up her glasses. The current ruling house is a scar, which you and I bo both belong to. We have governed Los Angeles for a number of years, but recently the other houses have gotten a little, how shall I put it, rowdy. We need to negotiate some sort of three-way peace to restore order, but that's easier said than done. There are simply too many de secret deals, betrayals, and assassinations going on behind the scenes. However, you are new enough to be politically naive and unbiased. She paused, that critical light glinting in her eyes again. Unlike most of the other vampires in LA, you have neither an existing reputation, nor any allegiances to speak of, and thus you may be the key to our re reconciliation. Um, so you want me to use as your political puppet, basically. The no, 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 novi, novi, noviation, novi, what the fuck? <laughs> oh shit, I'm behind time anyway. Who I intended to be turned tonight was to become an, was to become an agent. It is not political puppetry. It is the, 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 plum diplomacy and diplomacy comes in many forms and this is actually where i'm going to say for tonight tonight today um technically i should have actually done the intro just so i can get that to here but i didn't like a doo-doo head because when i hit skip i assumed they meant skip the quiz not skip the whole intro but if you guys haven't watched that just go back to one of my demos and watch it nothing changes uh, in the dialogue i think Besides, you know, the character customization. But definitely tell me if you want me to play more than just Heath and play the other two guys, which is Marcus and, um, Harold or something. I don't remember. Gerald. Some beefy name, I think. But yeah, definitely tell me you guys want me to play their routes. If not, I'm just gonna play Heath and call it a day. Alright? But thank you guys for watching. Stay beautiful. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Touch it, touch it, touch it.